how bad is it out there? When nine out of 10 Americans say that our country is, is experiencing a mental health crisis, it's bad. It's bad. And COVID just exposed it even more. So what are you learning on these tours? People are hurting. People are hurting at a very young age. You're talking about kids who are still in elementary school who are now showing signs of severe mental uh, stress. Um, we're learning that the system we have is geared for physical health, not well for mental health. One of the uh, interim CEOs at Children's uh, Colorado actually also drew the line at Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements, that they're not equal. Do you think they need to be equal for, for just these things? As you say, the broken bone and the mental health, that they're not, right now they're not equal. Uh, well, I'd go even further and say they're not enough. We are not yet investing in reimbursing providers the type of resources we should. Now, we're, we're already not doing enough in a lot of other spaces as well, but on mental health, you know, it, it, it wasn't until recently that you could get an insurer who actually gave you access to mental health services. And we still have a system where mental health isn't what you get at a primary care physician. When you go to a family doctor, that family doctor probably has not been trained to deal with mental health. But that may be the, the primary reason you need help. And so you had to get referred from that primary care physician before you can get to the real source of your real challenges. That's got to change. Mental health, if, it's gonna, if mental health is going to be health care, period, then it's got to be part of primary health not something where you get a, a referral to a specialist. How do we get the incentives to have young people become psychiatrists or psychologists? Right now, as you say, there's no financial incentive for that. Well, we can do a number of things, but we've got to do a lot. But let me tell you some of the things we're already doing because the president has given us some of the resources. We are now dedicating more of the uh, positions we have through the public health system. We have an opportunity to give people a chance to get educated, become doctors, and not have to worry about the medical debt that they would have. They just have to commit to about five years of service in a, in a uh, disadvantaged community. And so guess what? I'll pay for your medical school if you then commit five years. And in this particular case, this slot would be for mental health services. What's taken so long? Why hasn't the federal government done more until now? It's, it's, it's pretty simple, money. It's uh, also that we've never quite enforced the laws. And again, these are mostly state laws because healthcare, as you know, Stephen, is a state province. States control healthcare. Constitution left the federal government out of healthcare, but we're in it because we provide resources. When we put out a dollar, we can incent you to do something. So Medicare, that's a federal program. Why? Because Americans pay into it, but it's not because it's granted to them. Medicaid, we put up money for a state to buy into the Medicaid system. You want to help, help that family that's low income? You can do it through Medicaid. We'll pay a good portion of it, federal government, but you got to pay the rest. We can help those states go where they need to go when it comes to mental health because we need more resources. Does Congress need to step up and treat this as a continuing problem that they need to fund better? Absolutely. And that's why President Biden called this part of his unity agenda. This is something where red or blue, Republican or Democrat, we all know someone who needs help, who's had depression, who is, in, you know, every, every 11 minutes, someone's committing suicide in this country. We all know, we all know people like that. They're, and it's, they're, it's not based on their political affiliation. And so the president said, this is a part of the union agenda. We all can do this. In fact, there was, it was a bipartisan issue when we got dollars to deal with mental health. We just got to keep it going because we are so far behind. And one of the young people said to ask, I said, I'm going to talk to the secretary. What would you ask him? And he says, we're able to staff COVID beds. Why can't we staff kids mental health beds? I want to hire that person, whoever said that, because they're absolutely right. And that's what happens when you don't treat mental health the way you treat other health. You go to the ER and you say, my kid just broke his arm. He was playing football, broke his arm. You, know, you got the orthopedic surgeon ready to go. You say, my kid is contemplating suicide. And more often than not, they're going to look around and ask, do we got somebody around who's available? We just don't treat it the same way. You walk into their, your family, uh, family physician's office and say, I think my kid's got the flu. Doctor will know what to do. You say, my kid is solitary, won't talk. I saw some of his emails. 
I'm afraid he's suicidal. That doctor is liable to say, let me refer you to somebody I know and then try to get the visit with that specialist. By that time, who knows what could have happened to the, your son. And we just haven't dealt with it the same way. And the other thing we're not doing, Stephen, we're not listening. People are talking to us, whether they're sp saying it with words or they're showing it with their emotions, their physical uh, manifestations. They're saying, I'm hurting. We're just not listening. We're not listening with our ears. We're not listening with our eyes. In your mind, is that acceptable? No, no. And it doesn't have to be my family member who's hurting for us to want to act. We're an American family. We've got to do this. What took so long? Why didn't the federal government intervene before now? You know, it's, it's, sometimes it's hidden. You can look very normal. And then when you leave the room, you go into your shelter and you close the doors to everyone. Sometimes it's not so obvious. But mostly it's, as I said, we're just not listening. Is that acceptable that we've got young people in ERs all over with mental health issues all over this country? No, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not care. It's, it's housing them until we can get somebody who can give them professional help. It, yeah, they're crying out. And shame on us that we haven't prepared. If that were my son, I would want heaven and earth turned to give him what he needed, not in 10 days or now. We just got to treat every one of these individuals who's hurting as our loved one. Then we'll get, then we'll get action.